Hello and welcome to this Georgia's fantastic Tavern event. Um, my name's Claire Armistead, I'm Associate Editor of The Guardian newspaper and I'm very delighted to, um, to introduce today um, um, Becca Adamshvili and Lasha Bugadzi. Um, I have met Lasha before, um, a few years ago, um, when we did a very entertaining session around his Literature Express. I haven't met Becca, um, who, um, but I was very, very delighted to find his um, novel bestseller, which is exactly the sort of thing we need in this terrible um, pandemic era, I think. It's just a hoot. It's fun from beginning to end. Um, uh, uh, Becca is a postmodern, uh, we will talk about what that term means a bit more later on, Georgian author, blogger, screenwriter and creative director at an advertising agency. Um, bestseller is, it was his debut novel, which was originally published in Georgia in 2014. Um, and his second novel, Everybody Dies in This Novel, was published in 2018, which we will also talk about, which I also have discovered in the process of researching this um, session. Um, welcome, Becca. Hello. And uh, Lasha, um, it's a, it does everything really, novelist, playwright, cartoonist, journalist, TV and radio presenter. Obviously in Georgia you have to do a bit of everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, I encountered him, as I said, first for his um, novel Literature Express, which was written just after um, the 2008 war with Russia. And um, it sort of pokes fun at Georgia's yearning for EU membership and the struggles of small countries like Georgia to stand on its own two feet. Um, his play The President Has Come to See You was performed at London's Royal Court Theatre in 2013. Now a small country reflects the backlash he faced over um, his satire of Georgian Russian relations in the first, the first Russian, um, which involved uh, the medieval Queen Tamar, who I don't know very much about, but is obviously very important in Georgia. Um, and this led to um, censure in Parliament and a, a, a threat to excommunicate you. Is that is that right? Yes, right. So um, so let's start there. Um, tell us about um, a small country. Give us a bit more of the background and how it came into being. It's actually I, I have to say it's not fully translated into English yet. Although there is an you can find a free extract on worldswithoutborders.org. Um, I've only had a chance to read ten pages. So if anybody it's conversant with it in Georgian, and I seem ignorant, it's not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> so hello again, Claire. Hello. I'll speak with you. Yes, um, uh, unfortunately, we don't, uh, we don't have yet the, the English transla translation of my book, Small Country. I have here the Georgian version. It's oh, it's a big, big, big book. Yes, <laughs> uh, so more than 500 pages. Uh, so and uh, so I will try uh, uh, tell about what is this novel. As you know, as you said, uh, I wrote twenty years ago. I think uh, the, the the novel based on real story. The first Russian is a satirical story, which I wrote twenty years ago. This story is about the marriage of. Uh, 13th century Georgian Queen Tamar and the Russian Prince Yuri Bogolubsky. Yuri Bogolubsky historically was really the first Russian royal in Georgia. Uh, my satire is an allegory of uh, Russian-Georgian relation because Tamar and Yuri separated very badly. Uh, there was violence and a lot of bad things, which is uh, historically characterize it Russian-Georgian relations. However, many who had not read this story got angry with me. For example, members of parliament scolded me and stated that I was insulting Georgian traditions, history, and Queen Tamar, who is canonized by church, by the church. And uh, that I was supported by Western foundations to write this story, absurd. Anyway, many believed it. And again, the old Soviet absurd formula became relevant. I did not read it, but I condemned it. Uh, the parliamenters uh, were in fact demanding the restoration of the censorship, anyway, of our, our patriotic religious nature, which was unbelievable. 
many actors were uh, involved involved uh, involved uh, in the scandal politicians media even the president of georgia from this time edward chevarnadze and most importantly the georgian patriarchy which has always the great influence in this country i met uh, a patriarch who asked for public excuse for this story uh, I find myself really in the Inquisition era. It was funny, unbelievable, and scary at the same time, but it was also a great and interesting experience. So years later, I wrote a novel about this story, the uh, first Russian or small country, which extends on 500 pages, because this story describes the period from the Soviet 80s to the uh, 2000, 2008 uh, Russia-Georgia war. Because these events are conceptually related to my story about the tragic relationship between the empire and the former colony. It is uh, also interesting that the past still remains relevant today because populists and demagogues try to continue to use artificial themes to stir up phobias in certain groups of society and create images of the enemy. The main enemy for such groups now are the liberals. At the same time, the, uh, they accumulate political dividends and popularity by doing so. That uh, is why the story of the first Russian is relevant not only for Georgia. Brilliant. Um, I'm going to now put you aside. I'm going to park okay. you, as we say. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I move on to Becca, who's been waiting yeah. very patiently. Um, mm -hmm. tell, tell us um, about bestseller, Becca. OK, hello at first to everyone. Uh, regarding bestseller, it's a satiric, parody, detective, fantasy, uh, quest, uh, adventure, and what we have missed genre novel uh, about literary hell, where all famous and unknown writers are torturing by the same ways as their books uh, tortured and still torture readers. And um, the main inspiration for me, we are um, those dozens of classic writers, um, which I read in my childhood, in my early years. And it, it's, it's kind of revenge uh, against some of them uh, for making my uh, childhood even harder than it was in the 90s. Uh, and uh, for example, uh, there are some writers who are describing, uh, who we are describing nature on several pages. And I don't know any person um, who is in love with nature descriptive uh, stories in books. And moreover, I don't know any person who does not hate it. So now these writers are sitting in literary hell and um, reading the books where all pages are missing, except those one with nature descriptions. Uh, and also there are some writers who are um, sentenced, who are sentenced to plant um, uh, same amount of trees uh, which we are cut for their silly books or for their meaningless books and so on. And there are also some kind of individual uh, punishments. For example, there is James Joyce, who is sentenced to write uh, a footnote of his all footnotes uh, and so on. Uh, to be honest, I don't know what was the idea behind it. Uh, because I was, when I wrote this book, I was too young to think too much about this uh, idea. Um, but uh, I gave, the, uh, I said in the book's preface to the reader that they can't find any deep meaning there. So it was my honest, um, it, it was my honest step uh, towards them. Uh, How, I just old wanted... How old were you when you wrote it? Uh, I, I was 22. Oh my goodness, very young. Yeah. Um, I, I was 24 when it published, but when I was uh, writing, I was 22 and 23. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, um, and uh, now, uh, now it's like Rorschach's test. It depends on the reader's imagination, how they understand the main idea of this novel. But, but I just wanted to write about literature, about the thing uh, uh, I love most in that time. 
So, so um, it does require quite a lot of knowledge to really understand it, doesn't it? Literary knowledge. For example, you have um, one scene which involves a, an interrogation by Conan Doyle of six writers, and they're James Joyce, Victor Hugo, Oscar Wilde, Samuel Beckett, H.G. Wells, and Milton. <laughs> yes. uh, and and each each character responds in their in their literary style. Uh, yes, I tried to <laughs> use this. Uh, method of everyone in their centuries, uh, as everyone uh, uh, is in their uh, books in, in, in their centuries, uh, from the, uh, not first, but from the uh, 15th century to the uh, 20th century. Uh, I meant this, these classic writers when, when I was talking about the people who make, made my childhood um, harder. Some of them, uh, not everyone, because uh, I liked Oscar Wilde not John Milton and James Joyce, because uh, they were too hard for me. But um, I, I don't know the reason why I read them in the age of 13, 14, but uh, it was my fault. And um, then I tried to use this uh, knowledge in this book. Uh, how I uh, did it, I don't know, because it's, the, um, it, it's other people who should say this. Uh, so, so, uh uh, how, it, this is extraordinary to us because in England we don't read in translation very much. I mean, we wouldn't be reading school children would not be reading Tolstoy, which is when, when effectively as a school child you were reading Victor Hugo, or, or is that because yeah. so there must be a very good translation system of translation into Georgian? Presumably you weren't reading them in their original languages at that age. Yeah, uh, every, everything was in uh, in Georgian translated from uh, other. Um other countries, but um, uh, the main reason of this, of my knowledge in classic uh, writing is that we don't, we did not have any electricity in 90s in Georgia. So uh, the only thing I could do uh, for uh, make uh, something uh, useful for, uh, for myself was to reading books. Uh, and uh, these books were from uh, Soviet Union, translations were from Soviet Union because in 90s, we did not have many publishing uh, houses to uh, have new books. And also we did not have uh, enough money to buy uh, new books uh, if uh, there were any. Um, so uh, all these translations um, were old, uh, kind of old translations, but they, they were good uh, for understanding what, what happens uh, in other cultures, in, in other countries, and in other uh, novels. You're described as a postmodern author. What, do, what does that mean to you? <laughs> <laughs> People, people who described, described me as a postmodern author might have the better answer on this question, but I will try um, to explain what, what is postmodernism uh, for me in general. Um, for, for me, it's like a destructive child uh, who loves to play with uh, Lego blocks um, and tries to, to build his or her own uh, construction with the uh, pieces. Uh, which she or he inherited uh, from uh, elder brothers and sisters, uh, because uh, all I did was to was to I, I tried to destroy all classic things and to build my novel on the ruins uh, of uh, the, those books, and uh, uh, also um, to be post postmodern author for me means that. Um, look constantly for uh, the new forms of telling the stories, which uh, are all already told 1,001 time uh, before me. Uh, and um, at least it means uh, to write anything you want uh, without any rules and uh, any specific rules, I mean. Uh, and then uh, you can uh, justify it later with the phrase, it's postmodernism, everything can happen here. So. Uh, for me, postmodernism, post -modernism, the only rule of postmodernism is uh, to write um, without any rules and uh, to write what you want. Maybe it's not the uh, exact uh, explanation, uh, ex but um, for me, it's... Uh, it's in, in, in Everybody Dies in this novel, you have, um, 
you, you come up with the line, the author has died and the literary critic who first asserted this bit, fact has died as well. So yeah. long live the new character. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me, what does that mean exactly? I just thought that's a very interesting, that's interesting because that's beyond yeah. new, the, the, you know, what I think of as postmodernism is the literary, the, right, the author's died and the literary critics died. Uh, no, but but, you're moving on to a new generation, a newer generation, which is the character. <laughs> no, no uh, I, I meant uh, uh, once uh, one literary critic uh, whose name I forgot <laughs> for now, but uh, but he said uh, but he said that uh, uh, author uh, is uh, dead or author died, like Nietzsche said once that God is dead. Uh, so. Uh, I just wanted to, in this case, um, uh, in this case of everyone dies in this novel, I just um, tried to use all knowledge which uh, I had uh, from the um, uh, literary courses, uh, I, I mean comparative literature, uh, which uh, I learned a few years earlier. Uh, and uh, there, uh, there, the main point of this uh, novel is that the uh, main character realizes once that he's a character and he has a superpower to travel through other books and he decides to save uh, the other characters from the uh, most evil protagon antagonist in literature history, the author itself. And then he um, finds out that uh, since, while, she, while he's um, trying to save other characters, his own author is going to kill everyone in his own book. And he tries to, um, trans to, to transfer all characters from the postmodernism book to the other uh, uh, genres where uh, uh, there is safer. For example, social realism or uh, Shakespeare's epoch. Uh, Shakespeare's so, so, so for example, we're talking about this other, the other book now, you, you have him trying to save, he tries to suggest to Romeo and Juliet that it would yeah. be better not, oh, oh, if yeah. they didn't poison themselves, they might actually have yeah. a, a better story to tell, a longer yeah. story to tell. Yeah. Because they are too young, they are 15 uh, or, and 14 years old, as I remember, and they are too young to make tragedy from this uh, thing, what happens there. But um, uh, my, my, my character uh, did not success in this case, as we know, uh, and Romeo and Juliet died because of love. So in, in, in Bestseller, you have, um, it's, it opens with the suicide of, of an author, but you also invoke, as well as him, who goes down to this literary hell, you also have a, 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 a serial killer, who we don't actually see killing anybody, no, <laughs> but we, no. we're told That's... he's a serial killer. He seems a bit of a softy for a serial killer. Yeah, I, I don't like death uh, in reality. But maybe in the titles or in the plots of my novels, there is death, some, some kind of, but um, uh, in reality, I don't like it. And all my uh, writings are against the death, against, uh, against the authors who are killing uh, their characters just for the reason to have more emotions in their uh, writings. Uh, but even even in my second novel, uh, which a title is Everyone Dies in this novel, uh, the reader uh, has his own choice at the end. There are two endings and uh, which they don't like, they can cut out from the book. Uh, and uh, it's their choice if everyone dies uh, in this novel or not. Uh, so. Uh, so the subplot, in a way, which is a, a sort of relationship, which isn't a relationship, between the Claude, the, the serial killer, and Lucy, who's the neighbour of the writer who's committed suicide, it's almost like Hitchcock's rear window. They're looking at each other through wind. Was that in your mind when you were writing it? No, I did not. Uh, I did not know. I, I was too young, as I already mentioned. I did not know anything uh, more things from the movies because I was reading books. Uh, yeah. Uh, and did not watch uh, movies uh, because of electricity. <laughs> because you, you need to, you need electricity to watch books, uh, not books, uh, movies. Uh, and since uh, we did not have it, uh, we just read books. So uh, after uh, publishing my book, uh, then I uh, watched 
uh, that movie and uh, I did not uh, I, I could not do anything because everything had happened uh, before uh, but you could see a similarity could you yeah when, of when you yeah 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 I mean uh, but but I mean in a way that's the truthfulness of both the novel and the film isn't it it's it's uh, yeah, no, we do yeah. look at each other through our windows in our high-rise yeah, blocks of flats or whatever um, but, so, okay, but, but I can say that it's intertextuality and in, uh, in postmodernism intertextuality uh, is a good thing uh, yeah. I think it's intertextuality is a just a, a plagiarism but uh, since it's postmodernism it's a good thing mm -hmm. what is it like um talking about this novel now um because we're talking about a novel that you your first novel you've since gone on to write another one it was published seven years ago is this strange that you're revisiting it do you see a younger a younger self the longer a younger you in the writing of it uh during the uh writing of second novel or no the first one this 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 one so so bestseller do you do you see a younger you would you have see things in it that you would do differently now you're more experienced ah, okay. i understand um since i uh, i published a second book there were some people or many, many of them who said that the first one was better uh, so um uh, I, I i was thinking that i improved uh, this four year was enough uh, to that I am now, I, I can now write serious things and so on. But then I discovered that uh, there are people who um, who loved the first book so much that they did not accept the second one. So uh, now I'm thinking to uh, change things in second book, not in first one, uh, uh, because uh, uh, it's a little bit hard to understand second book than first one. So uh, if it's my choice, um, if someone will come and ask asks uh, asks me or suggests me to change anything in my books, uh, I will change another book, not the first one, because it was my um, it was my knowledge without any uh, experience, uh, without any uh, knowledge of rules, how to write books or something, and uh, it's more um, honest book. And the second one, which is full of metaphors and allusions and intertextuality and uh, such things became harder to understand to those people so i i would not touch it the first time and so you but the industry the publishing industry is healthy then i mean what what one thing that struck me from becker's you talk about orwell becker and yeah. orwell was banned well 1984 was banned in both the ussr and in the us but you still managed to read him as a teenager in yeah. Georgia. Yeah, because uh, fortunately I was born in uh, in, a, in a country which was already uh, free uh, from um, Soviet uh, Union. And uh, I don't remember any book uh, that was banned in, in, this, in uh, that time when I started to read. Uh, because we, we, we did not have just <laughs> Some of books, but that's not not because that they were banned, but not because that they just were not in our in the libraries of our uh, grandfathers and grandmothers. Uh, but when I read Orwell, uh, I was already um, big enough uh, that uh, books uh, were not um, banned uh, in Georgia. Uh, I don't remember uh, those times when uh, there were um, this kind of censorship and uh, I mean the official censorship and uh, the book we are banned. Uh, I'm lucky one uh, in this case because I am the uh, I am I am the part of generation of um, free Georgia. The, the, the free Georgia generation. Um, talk a little bit about what it means to be from a small country. I mean, I did wonder whether you being from a small country meant you so, sort of didn't suffer quite as much as some of them, you know, you, you, you could do your own thing a little bit more. I wondered whether that was one of the things that was going on here. Is that tr possibly true? Um, Lasha. I'm uh, very proud of my small country, but historically we have lived in very difficult region with empires in our surrounding. 
who were annexed by Russia for 100 years and then 70 years by the Soviet Union. And uh, now we have a dangerous neighbor in the face of Putin's Russia. Russia occupies 20% of my small country and threatens our freedom because it cannot forgive us aspiring to the West. Russian soldiers are always kidnapping our citizens and carrying out a creeping occupation, pushing the border deeper, my country. Their military bases uh, are located 60 kilometers away from the capital uh, of my country, Tbilisi. We are faced with a constant existential reality, whether we will survive or not. Anyway, we have existed for 3,000 years. Actual and moral support of the West is crucial for us, Ukraine and other European countries. So now this is my ignorance. Um, is mm. Georgian is a different language, written written language to Russian? Is mm. it not comprehensible? Are they not in? It's absolutely different language. Completely different. So, oh, and you have both oh, made the choice to write in Georgian, have you? Presumably, yes. you could write in both languages if you wanted to. Uh, yes, but we are uh, writing in Georgia because Georgia is absolutely different language and uh, completely. Yes, for for uh, 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 historically, Georgian writer is uh, jo uh, Georgian writer is uh, he or she who writes in Georgian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, we are we are proud of our language, which is old, unique, and rich. But in the case um, of writing, all these advantages turn into the uh, challenges. Um, because if you want to, make, to meet international uh, readers and you write in Georgian, you have two options. Uh, the first one is to convince people with mass hypnosis or something that they must learn Georgian just for the reason to read your books. Or the second one, translate your book in a language in which they speak. And since I don't have um, the ability to hypnotize many people yet, uh, translations is the best option in this case. And because of this, uh, uh, all my characters are some kind of, uh, they have some kind of international uh, vibe and there are international ca cast of figures uh, in my books. Because when I uh, was writing um, those novels, I was thinking if it is translated in another language, will they understand uh, or not uh, our culture, our um, characters, our writers. And uh, my decision was not uh, that I, uh, was not uh, with, 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 with which I am proud of because um, I chose international characters because uh, uh, it's, it's hard to um, introduce great Georgian novels or authors or characters to the international audience with the book, which is unknown and unfamiliar itself. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's very striking to me that you that your your ear for the style of the writers in their own languages, and and I wondered whether there is a particular what is the tradition, the Georgian tradition, because you're picking up on lots of different world traditions. You pick up on, you know, Joyce's footnotes or um, um, Hugo's descript you know, endless descriptions of places of, of, of the inside of houses. <laughs> yeah, uh, we have. Uh... Almost the same traditions uh, which was in the world, for example, uh, when uh, there, were, uh, there was magic realism, uh, we also had uh, have the novels from magic realism, uh, we also have the uh, novels from social realism, and uh, we also have postmodern uh, novels, maybe few, fewer uh, than others, but uh, we also have all the traditions, and one of the uh, first uh, Georgian poet, uh, Chota Rustavad, which is, which should be, uh, uh, well-known um, uh, writer uh, in the world. Uh, he, uh, he was from 12th century and uh, his, uh, his masterpiece, uh, the, uh, how, how it's in English, Night in the, uh, Night in the Tiger's uh, Skin, uh, is, is still the best uh, Georgian uh, traditional and best Georgian uh, literary uh, thing uh, which, uh, which uh, created uh, ever. Uh, so um, the, our, our traditions are not 
so much different uh, with uh, the traditions from the uh, world and we tried to make the same things but but um, since our language was not and is not uh, too much popular uh, the only people who read um, and who are reading these uh, things uh, are also Georgians but uh, in last years uh, as Lasha already mentioned uh, we started uh, to translate our books, old books and new ones uh, to, to the languages which are more popular in the world. For example, in German and in my case, uh, in English too. Who, which countries um, have taken your, your books? Which, what languages have you been translated into? Are there, are there, you know, are you, for example, more popular in Germany or France? I mean, some- In Germany, in Germany. Yes, because of uh, Frankfurter Book Fair, I think. Uh, but in, but also in other countries, they have some interest. Yeah, uh, in, in my case, there are several countries from Eastern Europe, for example, Bulgaria, uh, Croatia, uh, Poland, uh, and then in our neighborhood, Turkey. Uh, Turkey. Uh, but it's all, all, uh, all, pro, uh, all translations are now in process. Uh, the uh, full translations, the, all, which is already completed, is in German and now in English too. Well, now the thing that we haven't talked about yet, which is really important to both of your work, I think, is humor. And I'm interested in the way that humor works, particularly. Um, Lasha, you, you, satire is your thing. <laughs> Am I right or am I wrong? Is that a very, a very reductive you're right. way of You're right, it? you're right, yes. <laughs> Why satire? It can be claimed that humor is the part of our culture, often absurd, or rather reality is absurd in this, uh, and its reflection also turns out to be funny. I would say that humor is also an instinct of survival because Objectively, Georgia has many challenges. And if you do not smile sometimes, you may go crazy. Humor in my books does not exist for its own sake. It just turns out that some things are both dangerous and uh, fun. But, you're, but you're, I mean, you're... You, you tell dangerous stories, don't you? For example, in The President Has Come to See You, you're telling, yes. talking about the president who'd been a president, who, who then I was looking and saying, you're actually still around. He's now in Ukraine, isn't he? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. He yes. hasn't gone away. You're talking, I mean, you know, that's that's quite dangerous to write. And, and then also, um, was it Putin's, Putin's mum, was it? Putin's mum, yes, yes. Yeah, yes. yeah, you're writing about Putin. I mean, this is dangerous stuff you're doing. <laughs> No, put this mum is not so dangerous. It's it's really fun because uh, everybody knows in Georgia. Even Becca knows, and everybody knows that uh, near Gori, it's a small town, and Gori is famous because in Gori was born Joseph Stalin. Uh, and near Gori, small village, Meteki, and in Meteki uh, lives uh, the old lady who said that I am put this mum, uh, and she looks like very. Uh, the, it's a very famous story about this lady. We have movies and documentary, etc., etc. And I wrote the monoplay about Putin's mom, about existential mom of Putin, uh, who want uh, again to recreate this Stalinism uh, in uh, nowadays. And uh, so, but about this play, the president has come to see you. Yes, really, uh, uh, the, my character has a prototype. Uh, he's uh, our president, uh, Saakashvili, he was very interesting guy. He is. He's the, he remains uh, interesting to some people. Very interesting, very int interesting. And uh, the play was based also on um, real stories. Um, my play is also about 2008, August War. And uh, it was amazing, really, uh, in Royal Court, the production of uh, Royal Court. This was... It was very good production. I was very, it was the launch production of Featherstone, wasn't it? You had the honor of, of yes, carrying yes. in the new director. Yes. Um, okay. um, you, you, you have a lot of punning, going back to this humor idea. You have a lot of puns in your, in your writing. And I, I, I'm interested in that because I would have thought the puns would not translate. <laughs> a pun being the, the, the distance between two words, making yeah. a joke of the distance between 
two words in the, invested in the same word. Yeah, yeah, because because of this, all transla each translation of uh, my books uh, are, is a great responsibility um, before um, before not before uh, for um, before readers because uh, there are um, many of uh, allusions and puns and word plays as you already mentioned. But uh, I'm trying to um, to use my knowledge in this in these languages and to transform uh, this Georgian word place into uh, English or into German uh, language. Uh, and sometimes it becomes uh, better than it was in, in an original. Uh, for example, um, in bestseller, um, there is um, there is Alexander Dumas' father, which is uh, which is famous uh, with his co-workers who he uh, paid to write. Uh, uh, his uh, novels uh, and in literary help because of this, uh, he's uh, uh, sentenced with uh, writer's block and other people um, are writing for him. And in Georgian version, uh, there was just other people, but in English vers version, it became uh, ghost writers, which is much more better for, uh, for the hell to have ghost writers than just people uh, around. So in this case, and in many other cases, um, sometimes it's uh, it's a good to uh, to have a chance to change something which you did not, which you don't like anymore. And um, for me, it's uh, not a challenge, but uh, it's like a possibility to make better book than it was in, in an original. Better book than the original writer wrote. Yeah. Oh, that's cheeky. That's cheeky. Um, so you have at the Othello Hotel, for example, is where where the interrogation takes place, isn't it? Is it and Edgar Allan Poe's Rue Morgue features? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because yeah. Uh, in, in Georgian, morgue uh, also means uh, the place where all dead people are, but not in in uh, in, a, uh, in a German, for example. And then we try to use another word, and in a, sometimes we change also characters, not not only words. For example, there was another writer in a German version because uh, some of them was not uh, fit uh, in this interrogation part. And in, in English version, there is Oscar Wilde, but in Georgian, there was my, Thomas Meinrid. But uh, those puns from Thomas Meinrid's novels uh, was uh, kind of uh, hard to, to fit in English version. So now it's better because Oscar Wilde, I think, is a better known person in uh, in UK than um, Thomas Maynard would be because Thomas Maynard is from my childhood. My childhood, we, we had too many books uh, from Maynard translations and uh, this was so adventurous that I loved uh, to, read, uh, to read about it. But when I started to translate it in German, for example, uh, their editor said that it's not well-known author in Germany, mm -hmm. as uh, it was in Georgia. So, so it's it's good for me uh, to translate. And uh, I had I had the, I think one of the best translators in Georgia, Tamar Japaride, who uh, whose uh, whose work was brilliant for me. And I just changed a little bit things uh, connected to word place and. Uh, so you're uh, having to work with the translator. Yeah, I like a uh, new version. You're not leaving it. You can't leave it to the translator in that case because you're actually slightly reinventing the text to make it culturally sympathetic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'd love to work with all translate or uh, translators, but uh, the um, bad part of this is that I, I don't know more uh, any other languages except English and German. So uh, I'm going to uh, learn a little bit of uh, um, other languages in which. Uh, my book is going to uh, translate, uh, but I think, and I hope that there will be so many that I will uh, refuse my <laughs> this decision to translate to uh, to learn all of them. Mm -hmm. But uh, for for now, uh, my plan is to learn a little bit uh, structures and at least words to understand if it is uh, translated correctly or not. Mm -hmm. You're both polymaths, you both do lots of different jobs, as I mentioned at the beginning. What, what influence do you think that has? Why, why do you do different jobs? Is it because it's hard to earn a living as a writer or is, it, is that a matter of choice? It's, why, why, why is that? Nasha? Uh, 
Uh, yes, okay. because it's it's hard to it's impossible to do with uh, books, uh, uh, but. Um, Thanks God, we are close to literature. Our job is, is close to literature. Uh, for example, I have with my colleagues on TV, literature TV show and political, political literature TV show. Also, I'm a blogger on Radio Liberty. Uh, and also I have a lectures in university about literature. Uh, so, and, um, and sometimes I have a time to write my <laughs> yes, and uh, but it's good that uh, we can see that new generation is very uh, that they have interests or uh, for literature, and uh, uh, we became new 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 readers. I think yes, Becca. How do you think? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my uh, my job also is connected with at least creativity because uh, advertising business, it means that you work all day in creative um, field. Uh, and uh, it also ha um, uh, has uh, some kind of uh, advantages because uh, you can collect the ideas for your literary works when you think about the ideas. And uh, uh, if clients in advertising business will refuse your ideas, you can use them uh, for readers because clients and readers are different um, people uh, and uh, the idea which is not uh, compatible for um, uh, for clients uh, for advertising maybe uh, became as a, a source of uh, of a good uh, good novel. Uh, so uh, I'm uh, I'm agree to Asha that if you want to write in Georgia, uh, you should have another job too, uh, <laughs> because uh, it's a little bit hard to live only with writing. You don't have state subsidies for writers that, that can keep you? Uh, nope. No. Um, and, and do, um, so when do you write? Do you have to write outside working hours? Does that mean that you're writing at five o'clock in the morning? And ten <laughs> <laughs> I love sleep more than writing. Um, <laughs> but... Uh, uh, so in COVID era, it's very abstractive. Uh, yeah. The time and when, when when began the day and when it ends, yeah. it's a, a, absolutely it's very amorphic, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it does also raise raise the issue of what stories you tell in which medium, doesn't it? Which you you met, you sort of raised that a bit, Becca, there about advertising, the stories that don't get into advertising. But for you, Lasha, what, what do you put on the stage? What do you put into television? What do you put into a novel? Do you know that a story belongs to your novels or a story belongs to the Yes, theater? yes, yes. A lot of stories around us. And uh, so sometimes I will catch, catch up some stories. And uh, uh, now I'm, I'm working on my novel, new novel. It's also about uh, our um, period of um, beginning of independent. And uh, so I discovered that more, you know, that uh, we are, uh, it's like a, a archaeology. When we are very, uh, when we are very close, we can see everything. Uh, but if we are very far from some period, we can see something new and it's like a magic. Uh, and uh, I discovered a lot of things in the 90s that we have, uh, why we have some problems uh, today because of that. Uh, and uh, we did not have some uh, uh, reflections, and we need reflections. Uh, so, so, and uh, uh, but uh, but uh, also the the, uh, the period of COVID period is also also very interesting because uh, we will put this experience that, that, that psychologically or something emotionally in our texts. It's it's uh, we are, uh, it's period of changes. I yeah, but not you're not going to write the COVID novel, are you? Are you writing? I don't novel? think so. I don't not think yet. so. But 20 years, I, 20 not years yet. later, maybe. Yes, because it's presence now. We should go far from there. <laughs> have a little bit of time. Yeah. Yes. Um, just um, one last question before we finish. Um, it, this is this this month is the centenary of the invasion of Georgia. Yes, February. Yes. I was wondering what that meant to writers today. Is that a period that you're looking at a lot, or, or what? You know. It... Yes, it's it's past really 
but uh, you know we have a trauma tra trauma historical trauma uh, because of uh, it's 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 not very uh, really past because uh, we still have uh, with same country with same neighbor problem uh, and our independent has uh, problem uh, with this country but of course the world is uh, different uh, everything is different but uh, but uh, we are still afraid of that uh, and uh, we should remember again and again what happened uh, 100 years ago because um, uh, because in soviet time the february of uh, uh, the uh, 1921, uh, it was forbidden. It was forbidden because it was uh, uh, in Soviet uh, in Soviet propaganda. It was the um, uh, great era that uh, we uh, we became uh, the part of Soviet Bolshevik country. But it was a huge tragedy, and then we remember what happened. Uh, our parents and our grandparents' generations. For them, it was very. Uh, they, 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 they they did not uh, speak about that. So now now it's um, it's a, some. I read some you know famous book about anniversary syndrome, uh, the psychologically uh, about psychological things, and we have now like this uh, anniversary syndrome. It's uh, really it's a historical trauma. And so, Becca, you're so much younger. You, you, you it was. Did, did he was he was born with Georgia. We yeah. knew Georgia. <laughs> who, who born Georgia? Georgia is something. Do you feel this trauma, or do you feel that you've sort of floated? Uh, your you, you, uh, your generation has moved on from it. No, not so much. I just have uh, a little trauma from uh, 2008. It uh, year uh, when mm -hmm. there was five, uh, the war Georgian Georgian Russian war which uh, lasted five days, but not the uh, other things because as I already mentioned, I was too young to to think and to uh, to have a trauma from those uh, moments. But uh, when I uh, watched uh, the um, footages and the uh, other things and pictures, when I saw, it, it's yes, it's traumatic and it still uh, continues until today. Mm -hmm. Even uh, 100 years are passed from the first uh, invasion, it's, it still reflects in our everyday life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, thank you both very much for a fascinating talk as ever. Um, and so as I said at the beginning, um, bestseller is available now in English and a, a small country you can read on um, uh, um, words without borders. Without borders. Sorry, I, sorry. A, a little, a little taster, a little taster of what will be. When will it be published in full? Well, I don't know. I you don't know. know. Yeah. And, maybe, maybe and after it's, COVID, COVID era. <laughs> and, and if by any chance you want to read lots of stuff and you haven't yet, I do recommend Literature Express as well, um, which is huge fun. Um, thank, you. thank you very much, both of and, you. And, and, and at the end, we should we should uh, we should thank um, to the uh, to the people who tries in, in everyday life who tries to broaden our audience and our books to translate in other languages, uh, National Book Center and also the Writers House Na National Book Center when it was um, it's now now closed, and uh, the Writers House. Oh, because all my translations and all my books, which is uh, which are translated in, in other languages, uh, it's uh, from their support. And uh, I like just to say, of course, George's Fantastic Tavern dot com, where there will be lots of other conversations. So do join the other talks as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Claire. Thank you. Bye. Bye.